Snowy plovers are a small shorebird that nest along the coastlines. They're about six inches small and they're mostly white and very cryptic and they have some gray and brown on them. And then they have a few characteristics that they have very dark eye lines by their faces and around their eyes and their neck collar, but they blend in very well with the sand and a lot of the debris that's on the beach. They match in closely to the beach and look like other birds, but you often find them up in the upper reaches of the beach. A lot of times people see the shorebirds down in the waves looking for food, but, but snowy plovers are up on the upper portions of the beach. They work the rack line for their food, and so if you see a bird that's lighter in color, about this size, little neck ring, that's likely a snowy plover. Snowy plover females will lay three eggs typically in a nest. It will take up to 28 days approximately to hatch those three eggs. And when they hatch, the chicks are fully feathered and their eyes are open just like chickens or ducks. Plover chicks are like little cotton balls with teen, tiny skinny legs. They can start moving around on their own within about an hour after they come out of the egg and can immediately start foraging. A lot of people have a hard time seeing the adults, so actually seeing a chick is that much more difficult. They are white with salt and pepper and a little bit of sand color, so they look often like the fine grains of sand that we see on the beach. Plovers have an interesting strategy to try to enable them to have more young produced during the summer season. And so what they do is both parents care for the incubation of the eggs. They take turns sitting on the egg. And then after that chick is hatched, a lot of times the female will go off and find another mate and start a whole new nest while she leaves the, the male to take care and raise the young. That again allows them to have more chicks through the season so they're not waiting each time, but uh, kind of a modern day bird. Snowy plovers prefer open sand habitat that's fairly flat with sparse vegetation and a little driftwood. They like to be able to see all the way around them so they can see predators approaching them. Plover habitat also includes the rack line, the area where vegetation and drift from the sea piles up at the end of the high tide mark. And in there, it's rich with food. There's uh, small crustaceans and insects and other invertebrates that the plovers look to forage along that rack line. Plovers are considered a migratory bird, though here in Oregon, some of them actually do stay the year round. About March, they start coming back if they've gone south towards Mexico and California, and that begins the breeding season. Officially, we consider it's from March 15th to September 15th. What does a snowy plover nest look like? That's a good question, depending on where they are on the beach. Some of the plovers like to embellish their nest with pebbles. Others will use what's already there for them. And so often we'll have large seaweed and kelp wash-ups, or they will find pieces of grass or wood to pull in. They'll hide them underneath beach grass clumps. They particularly like white things. They tend to pull white pebbles into their nest, sometimes white plastic, white pieces of shell. In fact, uh, one of our favorite nests of all time was in the middle of a white coat hanger. So they can be very creative, but we always tell people, if you just were to take the heel of your shoe and press it into the sand, that could be a snowy plover nest. Not only are the nests cryptic, but so are the eggs. You realize how well they can blend in with everything else around them. Plover numbers began to decline around 1970. In Oregon, the state listed them as threatened when they saw those numbers dropping. They didn't become threatened under the Federal Endangered Species Act until 1993. By then, in Oregon, the numbers had dropped down to, to about 30 individuals. Historically, in Oregon, there are about 20 sites uh, where plovers nested on the Oregon coast. But through the years, urbanization, habitat degradation, and habitat destruction have limited the spaces available for plover nesting. On the Oregon coast, we had open sand areas with low-lying mobile dunes, which created ideal nesting areas for plovers. But over time, with the encroachment of beach grass, a high fore dune was created, a very high stable dune, which led to a narrow beach being created and fewer spaces or places for western snowy plover to nest. They've lost an enormous amount of their habitat. 
They've also suffered a lot of impact from recreational activity. It's very difficult for them to survive where there's a lot of humans around and a lot of disturbance. Several of the snowy plover nesting areas are close to campgrounds or a lot of human activity. And this human activity can attract predators such as crows, ravens, raccoons, opossums. And uh, those predators will actively seek out plover nests, eat the eggs, and uh, sometimes uh, try and catch adults and eat them. The birds sometimes have a pretty tough time out there. And what has ca caused their decline has a lot to do with what people have done on the beach and what we've done right along the coastline that's adjacent to the beach. The habitat is changing and they're trying to evolve as fast as the changing habitat, but that's not always possible. Plovers don't see the boundaries that we humans have put on the landscape. They nest on the beach, half of which is owned by the state of Oregon and the other half federal agencies own. And so we have found through times that there's no way we're going to recover the species if one agency tries to take it on by themselves. And we began working together as a snowy plover working team to work together on leveraging funds for habitat or for studying and also for matching the recreational restrictions that we apply to their nesting areas so that people would come to different beaches and see the same thing. The snowy plover working team is made up of a variety of agencies um, including Fish and Wildlife and our state agencies, the Department of Fish and Wildlife and Parks. We also have a variety of other federal agencies, BLM, who I work for, and the Forest Service. One of the first thing that the Snowy Plover Working Team did was we concentrated our efforts on learning how to remove European beach grass. This plant is so tenacious. It, uh, it loves being in the open sand. It, it thrives in that. It gets buried by, uh, by wind storms and it still grows up to the point that it can have roots 25 feet long. So we had to learn a little bit about this plant and we started taking time to try different methods and find the best way to get rid of it. So over time we've actually restored habitat on up to 500 acres and a few new sites and it's key for this bird to be able to have habitats that are well distributed along the Oregon coast because if something happens to one of the sites, they can go to another site and be able to re-nest. The range-wide recovery objectives for the plover are to have 3,000 breeding adults from southern Washington down to southern California 10 years prior to delisting and five years prior to delisting an annual productivity rate of one fledged chick per male and also mechanisms in place to assure the long-term protection and conservation of the species. We try to have a balance of management on the beach between recreationalists, the natural resources, scenic values, all sorts of things come into play when we're looking at managing the beaches for the people of Oregon. When you visit the beach, you'll see symbolic fencing, which is essentially a roped areas and posts and do not enter signs that delineate where the plovers like to nest. We want people to recreate on the beach, but um, at the same time we need people to be aware that there are animals out there that are trying to have children just like we are, and it helps really to um, give them a little bit of space, and that's really what we're asking people to do when we say share the beach. People can share the beach with snowy plovers by observing the signs, not entering the nesting areas. Know before you go. Check regulations. Tell your friends about plovers. Share your knowledge about the birds with others so they can learn too. One of the main things I do as a beach ranger is try to help people share the beach with the plover. And one of the main ways they can do that is controlling their animals they have with them on the beach, keeping them on leash in areas where they're allowed, and then keeping them out of areas where dogs are not allowed. The main predators for plovers can be coyotes and animals that look just like their dogs. So a lot of times they may scare the animals off their nests. You can also share the beach by taking out with you what you bring in. Don't leave any trash behind. Most people are supportive of the message that we send out and that of sharing the beach. They um, want to recover this species and are willing to have some inconvenience to maybe go to another area or give a wide berth to a nesting zone, especially when they understand that out of all the Oregon coast, we only have 
a few miles of, of restricted areas. Not only are we asking the people to share the beach, but plovers are sharing the beach because they're moving between California, Washington, going to Oregon, and they kind of flip-flop around. So you see that we're all working together, and that's what we're trying to get people to do, is to work together to make it better for both the people and the plovers. Since the plover working team began trying to recover this species, we've made some great efforts and some great strides. We've been able to see those 30 birds come up to almost recovery levels, about 250 birds on the Oregon coast. From, from the efforts we've done with creating the 500 acres roughly of beach grass uh, removal and the restrictions where the public's helped us uh, by cooperating and staying out of those areas, and the predator control measures that we've also put in place. And so we think with the, the sharing the beach and the efforts that we're doing that uh, we're gonna help the species make it. And we're quite excited about that.